So I was given the task to talk about some of the fundamentals of ctDNA, which um, included um, you know, what it is um, and also what we can measure in, in the circulation with ctDNA analysis, the type of assay and really some of the pitfalls to look out for when clinicians are ordering tests and interpreting results. So what circulating tumor DNA are, they're basically small fragments of DNA that's um, shedded from the cancer cells in the circulation. So the amount in the blood really varies um, depending on the patient's cancer type as well as the volume of disease that they have. So obviously in patients with stage four disease, they have higher volume of this tumor DNA in the circulation versus patients with early stage disease where they have much lower volume of disease. So the type of assay that is required to measure ctDNA in the circulation is really depending on what we use it for. There's currently no one single assay that it's fits for all the purpose. So we really need to understand um, if you want to measure microscopic disease, what we call minimal residual disease in early stage disease to track um, to see whether the patient still have residual cancer cells after surgery um, to decide whether the patient need to have chemotherapy or not. We need ultra sensitive tests that is specifically designed for that purpose. So these are a lot of these uh, next, generation, next generation sequencing with molecular barcoding, for example, um, down to sort of 0.01 sensitivity for that purpose. However, if you want to use it for metastatic disease, just to look at particular mutation to find the right drug, in that case, you don't need very sensitive tests. Um, any tests that have 0.1% to 1% you know, type sensitivity, you can use those. Now, commonly, we use this um, white panel testing that's available. Um, and these are quite good because you don't need to know what mutation you are looking for because it covers a huge panel. Um, so we can use those to look at resistant mutations as well as we track patients' um, journey throughout their treatment to look at um, what other targets we can um, give them potential treatment for. So that's the different types of assay um, I sort of discussed during, during the meeting. And really the pitfalls um, I sort of mentioned and highlighted during the, um, the discussion was uh, mainly about false negative tests. So different types of genetic changes um, between point mutations, between fusions, between amplifications and deletions have different performance. The assay have different performance for different types of variants. So it's important that oncologists, when they order the test, understand um, or read through the technology paper provided by the particular assay in terms of what um, level they can detect, uh, comfortably detect the type of mutation or, or variant. So, for example, if um, they want to look at particular mutations, fusion and the assay only can detect reliably the fusion if it's at 1% level and you know that the patient's tumor uh, in, in the circulation, the tumor volume is only 0.5% level, that case you wouldn't really comfortably um, accept the results that's reported by that CTDA for that particular um, type of uh, mutations or variants. So that's one of the highlights that I want to um, point out. Um, it's important to also know when to take the blood test. The timing of the blood collection is extremely important to get the highest yield of the results. So we would encourage um, that clinician take blood tests when the patient's cancer is actually growing or progressing on treatment rather than responding. So because when patient's cancer is responding, the level of their tumor DNA in the circulation is low. So it's more likely to give you a false negative result. So um, also try not to do it during active treatment because that would also um, cause you to have a low um, level of ctDNA, which also um, affect the results that, that the clinician wants to get out of. Um, so those are the main, main things I covered during the education session.